Brunswick Zone in Lakewood, Colorado. It's time for the PBA Denver Open. Another pressure-packed week has produced a focused Final Four. They are ready to roll. This 26-year-old was the 2002 PBA Rookie of the Year. He won his first title this season at the International Japan Cup and looks for one on home soil today. From Malden, South Carolina, Tommy Jones. Tommy Jones, the prototypical power player. This week, he powered his way to the show, playing to his strength, the deep inside line. From Bedford, Texas, the 1999 PBA Rookie of the Year. He is in season number six on tour, and today looks for his first title, Paul Fleming. Paul Fleming, a tweener out here on tour, not too straight and not the big hook. And this week, he took the direct route to his seventh career TV Finals. A two-time PBA Player of the Year. He holds 21 career titles and was the 15th man to throw a 300 on television. From Claremont, Florida, Stormin' Norm Duke. The great Norm Duke hobbled with an injury on Wednesday. It didn't look like he would be able to finish the week, but the KG veteran persevered and looks for title number 22 today. A PBA Hall of Famer, his 22 career titles ranks ninth all time. The 1998 PBA Player of the Year from Alpharetta, Georgia, Brian Voss. Brian Voss, the ageless one. His skill and passion for the game enables him to be competitive year in and year out. Four finalists for the PBA Denver Open. suburban Denver where a jam-packed crowd has come to see the PBA's return to the Rocky Mountains. I'm Joe Tessitore in for Dave Ryan. Randy Peterson, let's look at the brackets. Thanks, Joe. In semifinal number one, it's a battle of former rookies of the year as Tommy Jones takes on Paul Fleming. And in semifinal number two, it's a battle of best friends. Norm Duke and Brian Voss have a combined 43 career titles. One of these best friends will bowl in the final. Oh man, will be facing an all-time great come title time. Paul, you have been preaching patience all week long and has worked out well, but patience in six years, you're still searching for your first title. Do you feel it in your gut? Is today the day you break through? I think so. Uh, everything has gone my way this week. Uh, I've got some key breaks when I needed them, and uh, hopefully they continue today. Best of luck. Thank you. Tommy, you know exactly what it's like to claim your first title, but you did so in Japan. What does it feel like now on American soil? Well, I mean, I always wanted to win a PBA title. I got lucky. I got fortunate enough to do that in Japan this year. So now these fans are electric, and I'm going to do it for him to, for them here today. Good luck to you. Randy, two former Rookie of the Year award winners. They're ready for it. Should be a great matchup. Lots of money. $232,000 total prize one $40,000 to the winner. The all-important all important points and a one-year exemption to the winner. Fleming will start the match on the left lane, which means he will have to get up in the 10th frame and finish. Ball came in a pinch high, Joe, and fortunate to trip the 4 7 out, only leaving the 10 pin. Ball's last televised finals appearance came 11 events ago. That was a 2004 PBA Reno Open. <laughs> Makes a spare. Six-year-old from South Carolina. Randy, how do the numbers stack up in our Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup? Well, Joe, it's a pretty tight matchup. Average is pretty close. Strike percentage. 
three percentage points higher for Tommy Jones. Spare conversion percentage advantage, Paul Fleming. And if Tommy Jones has problems getting to the pocket today, this is going to be very prevalent. 29th on the year for Tommy Jones, second for Paul Fleming. No problem so far getting to that pocket, Randy. We talked about it in the video open about Tommy Jones' power. He's playing to a strength right now, playing the inside part of the lane to start. It'll be interesting to see. He's so deep to start with. It'll be interesting to watch whether or not that shot will hold up throughout the day. Leaves the 10 again. And early on, you can see Joe Paul Fleming taking the much straighter, much more direct route. And he told us last night that was his best look all week. So he leaves it open in the second frame. Just a mental mistake. You see he was 67 of 68 on TV single pin conversions. That was the number for TV single pin conversions. Only one missed coming into today, but you saw one from Paul Fleming as he's now searching for that pocket right through the nose pin. Right now, just trying to gather himself. Well, I'll tell you what, the 3 6 is a lot harder to make than a 10-pin, especially after you missed a 10-pin. Tommy Jones early on in the driver's seat. Jones looking for the three-bagger. Chance to go up big. Look at how Tommy Jones got to the final four here. You see that he came back in the round of 16. He was down 1-3 to Wes Malott. Makes it. Getting back to the Wes Malott match, Joe, you mentioned he was down 1-3. In fact, through five frames of... Game five, Tommy Jones was taking off his tape, taking off, you see the tape around his wrist. He was basically packing up his gear. Wes Malott, a couple of opens late. Tommy Jones comes back and wins that game and then goes on to win that match. Second on this year's money list behind Danny Weissman. And with this start, he's looking to add to it. And remember, Tommy Jones won five million in Japan. Yen, that is. Take a look at the great pin action. That's what revolutions and power will do for you. Paul Fleming trails by 21 pins. Shreds that rack. Paul Fleming has lost his last six TV matches. However, it's not because he's bowled poorly. 225 average, anytime you're on television, I'll take that and give myself a pretty good chance of winning. Unfortunately, his opponents obviously averaging a lot higher. See Fleming working on a strike here. Try to close it to 11 points. Left the four. And that was really a big shot for Paul Fleming because he went high, he made the adjustment, and leaves a four pin. Watch how steady Eddie he is at the felon. He talked to us about sticking the slide, making sure that he hit that slide step real solid. A look at how Paul Fleming reached the TV semifinal. Came back from an 0-2 deficit himself. A couple comeback kids here. That was Friday evening against David Schraber.
Jones up 21 pins. Two straight strikes, two bagger for Tommy Jones, looking for his second title of the year. Well, we'll break down this swing in the Dexter approach, but I mean, just textbook. The deep inside line, power player, we saw Jason Hurd do a lot of that last week. Two similar styles. High rev rate, lots of power, medium high ball speed. Jones, good start to the day. When we come back, we will have the conclusion of Fleming Jones in semi number one. Plus, Randy puts a shrimp on the Barbie as we detail the oil pattern. Stay with us for the PBA Denver Open. Great crowd in Lakewood, Colorado for this week's stop on the PBA Tour, the PBA Denver Open. I'm Joe Tessitore filling in for Dave Ryan alongside Randy Peterson. Hey, this is a real interesting Final Four because to a great extent it represents the generational gap on tour. It, it sure does. The match that we're watching now pretty much represents the future of the PBA Tour. Our upcoming match with Norm Duke and Brian Voss, well, they're kind of the elder statesmen, if you will. Uh, they have a combined 43 titles. That truly is the PBA's version of Clash of the Titans. There's been some struggles out there, though, this week here at Lakewood. And it has a lot to do with that chameleon oil pattern. What can you tell us about it? The chameleon oil pattern is a tricky bugger. Players attack this pattern from multi-angles. You see a lot of them starting around second arrow like Paul Fleming is doing. Tommy Jones is playing the deep inside part of the lane, but you're going to see the players migrate in. But one thing you may see today that you normally wouldn't, if it gets really dry here, the players will actually go to the other side of the lane, and you could possibly see them playing outside first arrow. That chameleon oil pattern, fittingly named because it did disguise and change something this week. That would be the number of 300 games bowled. We didn't have any. They're an average of four a week. This week, nobody bowled a 300. I'll tell you, Randy, Paul Fleming, he was talking so much about patience. We didn't see much of it early on. He trails by 41 pins. Oh, a little late help. And right now, Paul Fleming needs some good things to happen, and he just had something good happen to him. This ball goes just a little bit high flush. Ball goes right by the nine, but this week... In Lakewood, we had great pin carry all week long. There's a good example of it. We'll double tap on that late nine. <laughs> Two baggers there for Fleming. Show you the difference of where the guys are playing. Watch where Tommy Jones's ball crosses the arrows. That's about 26 on the left side. Fleming, right over the third arrow, that's the 15th board. Some 11 boards difference between the two. However, their break point down the lane, just about the same. Four-bagger, Tommy Jones. Self-taught player, said he used to watch the tour on TV. Closely scrutinized the tip of the week. He's a good teacher, Randy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tommy Jones has learned how to bowl from being on the PBA Tour. See the numbers this week. All or nothing kind of week for TJ. 234.69 for his wins. I almost had a sleeper there. Tommy Jones in complete command of this match. Up 41 pins. I'm sorry, 40 pins in the spare there. Still to come from the PBA Denver Open, Randy calls it a clash of the Titans, two of the all-time greats. I mean, look at these gaudy numbers. 
21 titles for Norm Duke, 22 for Brian Voss. Duke, Voss still to come. Fleming, six years on tour, still searching for his first title. Uphill battle today. High. Paul Fleming's look, not very good. Heard him say, don't tease me when the crowd reacted. A little late help coming over and taking out the six pin. As long as the machine doesn't interfere with that pin falling, it stays down. It doesn't have to be reset. Picks up the single pin conversion. Trailing by 41. the max score if they get a strike out. Oh. Well, there's some hope from Paul Fleming. Very late help. <laughs> well, unfortunately, too little too late for Paul Fleming. But again, talking about the good pin carry here. Former All-American at the University of Nebraska. He was back there shredding racks the same time that our ESPN colleague Trev Albert was shredding offensive lines. Tommy Jones. Oh. Just keeps going and going. ESPN's coverage of PBA Bowling rolls on next Sunday as the tour makes a stop in Medford, Oregon for the Earl Anthony Medford Classic PBA Bowling on ESPN Sunday at 1 Eastern. Of course, you can always log on to ESPN.com for more information. Randy, you're going to be giving it a go out in Oregon? I will, and you know who else will be is Walter A. Williams, Jr., and if he were to win next week... No, he's knocking he, on the door. He would tie Earl Anthony's record. Now, how fitting would that be? As you see, Tommy Jones, who will advance here through semifinal number one. Very strong effort. He got out of the gate smooth and steady. Paul Fleming fell behind early on, and it's been all Jones. Picks that up. How fitting would that be, Randy? for next week, Walter Ray Williams Jr. to step up and make it happen. I don't think he could script it any better to have Walter Ray tie Earl's record in a tournament that has Earl's name on it. Well, Jones had done enough already. March to the PBA World Championship. We're going to take a look at Brian Voss in mere moments. Tommy Jones, eighth right now. He can add to those 59,000 and change with a win here at the PBA Denver Open. Finally patient, Paul Fleming. Too little, too late. Want to remind you, still to come, you will not want to miss this. Duke and Voss, two legends of the game, best friends on tour in semifinal number two. And Joe, your sport is boxing. This is truly a heavyweight matchup. Unfortunately for Paul Fleming, he was unable to beat the count today. Currently in the midst of a seven-match losing streak on televised matches. You see Tommy Jones. He can breathe a little easier now. You know, Jones has been doing it with blowouts all week, Randy. 16 wins. He averaged more than 40 points higher than his opponents. His opponents averaged 190. He was at 234. So Tommy Jones beats Paul Fleming in a semifinal number one. When we return, the competition gets a little less serious. Tony Reyes, Robert Smith in the Miller Highlight PBA Skills Challenge. Go again. Do it, do it. Come on, do it. Oh, he did. Oh. Still to come on the PBA Denver Open. What a clash of the Titans it'll be. Brian Voss, Norm Duke, 43 
combined titles between them. They're coming up in semi number two. Well, if you were with us last week, you saw Chris Barnes defeat Lonnie Wallachek in the Miller High Life Skills Challenge. The round of 16 ends today as the hardest thrower on the PBA Tour, Robert Smith, takes on his roommate on the road, Tony Reyes. Now, remember, the first bowler to outskill his opponent three times gets three strikes on the scoreboard and advances to the round of eight. Randy takes us through this battle of buddies. Come on, man. They're down here. Full good. <laughs> Get about, get about the, I don't know about what the second set of senses are. Just kind of stand, I don't know, probably about 20 or so, maybe a little right of 20. Just put your left foot right about there. All right, so. I need to get another ball here. <laughs> See, I've always wanted to do this to Chief when he's won. <laughs> Just kind of scare him a little bit. I hope you can jump. <laughs> Robert Smith trying to throw a strike without ending Brian Himmler's career. Looks good. Oh, ring at 10. Pretty good shot. That was close. Burn. <laughs> Brian Himmler relieved, but he's still walking upright. Now Tony Reyes will attempt the 157. <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> oh. Tony Reyes making that look easy. Robert Smith with the big high power rev rate should have no problem converting this. Robert Smith would leave a five pin. Tony Reyes now the one step delivery strike ball. God, Tony. Oh! Woo! That's good. Oh, Tony. one, no. Just one step, not eight. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Reyes all over Robert Smith, but Robert Smith has some game. Oh. Nicely done. Tony Reyes, nine pound ball, two fingers, has to throw a strike. Oh, that's got a chance. Oh! <laughs> you know how my strikes are, man. I don't make them explode. Mine just barely go down. <laughs> Gotta remember that. No thumb. There, no thumb. Robert Smith needs to convert, otherwise Tony oh, Reyes takes a two-strike oh, no. to nothing what? lead. Oh, I got pins. Oh. Pretty good seven. Oh, buddy. Tony Reyes. Tony Reyes will now throw a strike with a backup ball. He'll reverse the rotation at release. Oh, nice. It gets it done. It was an ugly strike, but it's still a strike. Oh, it's flop. Second pull. Tony, I still can't believe you got you that. You can never tell my read. Man. I mean. <laughs> I'm just dragging it out right now. Go Giants. <laughs> Go Giants. That's right, Dodgers made it. Last gasp for Robert Smith. If he doesn't convert, uh -oh. he's done. Oh. Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, three strikes around, and Tony Reyes is in. Congratulations, Tony. Dude, that is so <laughs> funny, dude. I can't believe that. Tony Reyes, the winner. Woo! Hey, man, look out. Join us next week as two bitter rivals get it on. PDW Pete Weber taking on Michael Haugen, Jr. And here are the updated brackets. Now the round eight, Couch Kretzer and advancing Tony Reyes against Barnes in the round of eight. Miller Highlight PBA Skills Challenge. When we return, the showdown between these best friends on tour who are among the best of all time. Norm Duke and Brian Boss are holding nothing back. Something's got to give, and we'll give it to you in just a few moments. 
Welcome back to the PBA Denver Open. Yeah, the Broncos fans taking a little bowling in today. I'm Joe Tessitore. And here is a look at the updated brackets. You saw Tommy Jones crush Paul Fleming. As for whose name is next to move onward, Randy Peterson is standing by with the semifinal number two contestants. Randy. Thanks, Joe. And a highly anticipated matchup between two of our sports goliaths, Norm Duke and Brian Voss. Norm, I'm going to propose this question to you first. How did you sleep last night knowing that you have to take out your best friend in order to win this championship? I slept great. I'm a Goliath. Look at me. No, you know, this is, this is really a, a no-lose situation for me because if, if I do go down, then I, I'm happy for Brian. But uh, I'll be even more happier if I can take him down. Thanks, Norm. Good luck. Brian, I'm going to ask you the same question. Uh, Norm Duke's been a dear friend of yours, your best friend for over 20 years. What it's, what's it going to be like for you to take him down today? Uh, well, first of all, he lied. He didn't sleep good last night. He told me that. <laughs> Uh, but I tell you what, uh, when, you, when you bowl a match, you, you want a worthy opponent. Uh, I expect uh, this to be a real tough match, and I uh, hope the fans really enjoy it. Thanks, Brian. Good luck. And remember, no matter who wins or loses, Joe, there will always be friends. But all is fair in love and war. I think they're having some fun with it, but it's about to get real serious. You know, it's a shame these two, with all they've accomplished, kind of curious number here, but through all the years... Only two times they faced each other on TV, and that series split one apiece. So Norm Duke, 40-year-old, his 80th TV appearance. Pure solid. Norm Duke, when I bowled next to him in the practice session on Wednesday night, didn't look like he was going to be able to finish this event. It, it didn't look like he was going to be able to bowl his first match. He went and saw a chiropractor that night who worked on him for a solid hour, fixed his hip, and came in and beat Hugh Miller the next day. And now he's on television. Randy, time for the Baby Ruth real deal matchup between Brian Voss and Norm Duke. Well, we talked about how these guys are best friends. Well, their stats are pretty close as well. Norm, just a couple pins a game, higher average. But look at everything else, how tight it is. These guys are like clones. See the TV win percentage between these two, but I mean, just look at those numbers, how many times they have been on TV. Two bagger for Voss. It's exactly what we expected early on. Both players playing pretty much the same line. Perfection early on. You could see Brian Voss. You see the passion. It's made him great for so long. Hall of Famer. Norm Duke. Matches looking for his title win for the first time in the last 15 events. You see how he got to this Final Four semifinal. Now, what's interesting here in the match play, he started off with three losses, two losses, one loss, and then swept through Richard Wolf. So momentum as the week moves onward for Norm Duke. Just kept getting better and better as the week went on. Speaking of momentum, hello, three bagger. Norm Duke and Brian Voss both pride themselves on making shots. Let me show you how the, you'd go about doing that. Watch Norm Duke at the finish. He doesn't move. Look at that. Fire in the eyes of Norm Duke, and he knows there's no holding back when you're bowling against a guy like this. The 46-year-old Hall of Famer in a match. And did he leave it out there on that one board, and it came back, and he shredded. Well, he got really lucky there tripping the two pin out, because this, all week long, was a 2-8-10 or a 2-10. That ball gets all the way back, and then again, the pin carry here, pins fell like balsa wood. This is good, good stuff between Voss and Duke. Voss for a four-bagger. Mm. 
Are they hot? Brian Voss, tough week throughout. He said, I bowled Mike Edwards three out of the last four weeks. He was my net. I finally got rid of him. <laughs> he said the reason why he made it here was because his entire family is here. His See. mother, Shay, his brothers, Mark and Mike, his sister, Dina. Look out. He said they were their inspiration. And a great story, we talk about the friendship between Norm and Brian. Norm Duke, as you see him, this is left of target. He's going high, trying to wave it off. Norm Duke actually knew that Brian Voss's mother was coming in last night before Brian knew it. So now the 6'10 for Norm Duke. First spare between these two. Joe, real quick, interesting note. Brian Voss, in his interview with us last night, told us that the winner of this tournament will come out of this match. Oh, and he was very confident in saying that. And you can see between these two the difference of the atmosphere between semifinal number one and this semifinal number two. Look out. So after starting with a three-bagger, now Duke settling in. And dealing with some issues. This was just a little miss hit at the bottom of the swing. Ball never grabbed the lane to get back to the 1-3. Norm left, leaving himself with a tough, tough spare. Looking to make his mark here, currently trailing by 15 pins. <laughs> Made the spare. He said, being pain free, is really the big thing for me this week, Randy. We talked about that early on. You can see some pain now on his face, not the physical kind in his hip. I actually practiced with Norm Duke at home last Monday. Norm had a little bit of a swing issue, worked on his timing a little bit, and then I watched him bowl for the next hour. He never missed the pocket. Brian Voss is on fire. You can see no defense to stop Brian Voss here in semifinal number two. No defense in our sport, all offense. Hello. Oh, do we have something special brewing here with Brian Voss? Perfect through six. Every week, hundreds of bowling fans get the opportunity to bowl with their favorite PBA pros in the PBA's Pro-Ams. Pros dispense advice, sign autographs, and mingle with the fans, who seem to take the tips to heart and enjoy the thrill of bowling with the world's best. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for the people to follow the tour to come out and you know, have a chance to actually bowl with us. As long as the people have fun, we all have fun. That's all that counts. What a great scene that is outside here in suburban Denver, and what a wonderful atmosphere inside with Brian Voss, perfect through six against Norm Duke. Joe Tessitore filling in for Dave Ryan alongside Randy Peterson with you in Lakewood, Colorado. Norm Duke is in his 23rd season on tour while Tommy Jones is in his fifth. Randy breaks down the difference between the old school and young gun in this week's Dexter approach. Old school versus new school. Similarities end right here with a push away. Now watch this at the top of the swing. Here's old school. Shoulder high back swing. Check this out. The vertical swing, that equals power. This also equals power. When you have power, you've got to feed it right. That's why Tommy Jones has that kind of upper body lean. You can see Norm Duke much more direct and much straighter. But something that Tommy Jones has been trying to acquire since he joined the PBA Tour. Norm 
Duke. Oh, you know, he needed to get it back. Left that solid 10. Needed to get something going there because Brian Voss is perfect through six frames. When you make a good shot like that, you don't want to see a ring in 10. Talk to us yesterday about knowing how everything's right for him. It was right that time. He said, if you see that I'm fidgety, a little worried, I'm not cooking on all gears. But if I'm in control, I know I'm going to win. You know, he may even be in control. But with Brian Voss doing what he's doing, you can be in control all you want. Exactly. And again, we talked about the Canadian pattern being a pretty tough pattern. Our toughest pattern on the PBA Tour this year out of our five patterns, not counting majors. Look at him waving that one up again. And quite honestly, the difference in this match thus far is the fact that Brian Voss basically tripped the 4 7 10 out twice and tripped the two forward. Norm Duke, the only time he struck is when his ball was dead flush. Struck three times to open things up since then. Four straight frames where he's been trying to convert the spare. See the other finishers at the bottom of the screen. Oh, and he leaves an open frame, and that could be deadly in this clash of the Titans. Yeah, and that almost spells the end for Norm Duke and something that you would never, ever, ever expect from him. Pressure does funny things to people. See Walter Ray Williams finish 32nd this week. Seven, Brian Voss. About the only thing Brian Voss hasn't done out here that his best friend Norm Duke has is bowl a perfect game on television. Diane Shea, Brian Voss's mom. So happy to have his family here. He says that is the true inspiration. Wow. Do we have history in the making? In the history of the PBA on television, there have only been 16 televised 300 games. Brian Voss through eight. January, Seattle, 2003. Norm Duke against Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Perfection! Right now, Norm is hoping for the same for his buddy Brian Voss, who was perfect through eight frames. Finally, after the struggles Norm Duke gets something going, but the story, Brian Voss, four away from a 300 game. He said, when you're a competitor, you want to be a part of something exciting. Boy, is he in the midst of being a part of something exciting. 16 perfect games in the history of the PBA on television. It was great while it lasted, though, wasn't it? Norm Dick, congratulating his partner. This shot's too fast and too wide. Never makes it back up to the pocket solidly. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. What's going on? I, I guess that's like when the pitcher gives up the little blue single for the no-hitter, and next thing you know, he gives up a homer. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but he can laugh it off now. The 46-year-old Hall of Famer. You see his best friend there, Norm Duke. There was so much buildup after Friday night's round of eight when they knew they would be facing off against each other. 
And you know that right now, Norm Duke has only one thought, and that's watching Brian Voss secure himself another PBA title. You know, the other interesting note, when you talk about Brian Voss and, it, and him being 46 years of age, when 80% of the players are using 15-pound equipment, Brian Voss is still using 16 pounds. It just tells you the kind of shape that this 46-year-old is in and why he's able to compete week in and week out of here. Brian Voss, the fans very appreciative. 265, he was perfect through eight. The Hall of Famer in Denver. Norm Duke. He was at one time the youngest player to ever win on tour at age 18. Now some 22 years later. Non-exempt qualifiers, Randy? Jeff. Familiar name on there? Well, yeah, I got a commissioner's exemption and scared Pete Weber when I won the first two games of our match. But check out Timmy Mack and Jeff Carter. They both won multiple matches this week. <laughs> Jeff Carter's been making it out of the qualifiers each of the last three weeks. Out of your towel. <laughs> <laughs> now, a little fun. Best friends, maybe practicing for the skills challenge here. This is a ten dollar strike. <laughs> this, this will count as fun zero. for the crowd, but it counts for a zero formally. Let's see if you can pull it off. for the game he has and the respect he has for his best friend. Check this Norm out, Duke. man. This is cool. Out of a towel. Come on, ball. Five big get to seven out of there. What a classic. An emotional Brian Boss is headed to the finals against Tommy Jones. Denver's long been a hot spot for future PBA Hall of Famers. In 1970, Bo Burton won three matches, outlasting Jim Stefanich for his first win of the season. He would have three titles and be named Player of the Year. In 1971, Dick Weber needed a roll-off to advance before squeaking by Tim Harahan by 10 pins for his 21st career title and second in the Mile High City. A year later in 1972, we saw Don Johnson plow through the field from the fifth spot, winning four matches and taking his second title in two weeks. It capped an incredible 10-year streak in which every Denver winner went on to the PBA Hall of Fame. Here's a look at some of the Hall of Famers who have claimed titles in Denver. Perhaps today's winner has great things in his future. Well, that's what they're playing for, the PBA Denver Open title. You can see Brian Voss and Tommy Jones preparing themselves for today's final. It should be a great one. Welcome back to the PBA Denver Open. You know, most of you know Norm Duke has 21 titles to his credit, but do you know about his fishing prowess? Randy asks him that and more in this week's Miller Six Pack. Norm, what's the smartest thing you've ever done? I quit baseball. At one point, I stopped bowling to play baseball because I just loved it. The smartest thing I ever did is go back to bowling because I wasn't very good at baseball. I just loved to do it, but that's got to be high ranking up there. Good career choice. Yeah. What's the dumbest thing you've ever done? Quit bowling for baseball. <laughs> <laughs> what is the one thing that you do when you want to take your mind completely off of bowling? I go fishing. I never catch anything, so I'm really just out there pondering things, throwing stuff in the water and listening to it make these little splashes, so <laughs> that, that pretty much lets me regroup. 
any truth to the rumor that the last time you went fishing, you, you actually caught an alligator? Well, I didn't catch him in my hands. I was barefooted, but I hooked him. And so I was, you know, I, you know, fishing him around for a little while, but barefooted, I didn't want to tackle him. But he wasn't only about this big. Chasing my lure, I lured him right underneath and then kind of hooked him in the shoulder. And then I felt sorry for him. I cut him loose. Norm, what is your worst road trip on tour ever? Billy Young and I traveled from Detroit to Oklahoma City once. It probably took us three days in the snow. And we had the battery cables wrong. And then I stopped for gas and I pulled the whole tank right off of it. It was terrible. I left it in there and drove off, you know. You left the nozzle in the well, I left the nozzle in and then I, the whole, what is it called, aluminum cover just comes off. And I had this nozzle just strung out across the parking lot. And I, you know, I was in the full service. And I waved the guy off. I said, no, it's all right, I'll get it, because it was snow in there, you know. Right. And I went in, did my thing, drove off. Now he was really, he was really hot at me. In the future, at your Hall of Fame induction, what would you like to hear said about Norm Duke? Well, you know, I, I would like to, to hear that, that I was inspirational to the people behind me because I, I remember and still do, you know, I look up to Gary Dickinson and George Pappas and Jim Stefanich. Those were my bowling idols when I was growing up. And, you know, what they did for me on Saturday that they'll never even know about. Uh, you know, I hope one day somebody can say what Norm has done for me. Very thoughtful Norm Duke. I mean, he was very entertaining today. On the road, the PBA Tour is scheduled next week, the Earl Anthony Medford Classic at Lava Lanes in Medford, Oregon. We'll see if those Lava Lanes heat up. Pro-Am, of course, Saturday. Come on out to Lava Lanes. Then it's SoCal, the Orange County Classic, presented by Storm, December 15th through the 19th at the Fountain Bowl. The Pro-Ams, by the way, are on Saturday, December 18th, and you can see three different bowling centers listed there. Of course, for more, you can go to PBA.com. Should make PBA Tours official website, PBA.com, your official holiday shopping headquarters. All the latest PBA merchandise and apparel, including T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, player magnets, much more. They're available at the PBA's online store. Shop for the entire family at PBA.com. Once again, Brian Voss coming up in our final against Tommy Jones. He hasn't won in 44 events. We'll see if he can do it here in Denver. Last week's Pepsi Open saw PBA doubles titleist Jason Hurd snap a six-match TV Finals losing streak, defeating Rick Lawrence in his semi. I had to put the fire out, brother. I had to put it out. Sorry. Hurd then went on to face a gritty Mike Edwards in the Finals, where a 226 proved enough to claim his first career singles title and an all-important 2005-2006 exemption. Yes. Welcome back to Lakewood, Colorado, just outside of Denver, the PBA Denver Open. Tommy Jones defeating Paul Fleming, Brian Voss taking care of Norm Duke, setting up our finals. And let's take a look at our Geico Direct Championship Recap. Early in match number one, it was Tommy Jones defeating Paul Fleming by the score of 234 to 200. Jones jumped out early and never looked back. Then in match number two, it was Brian Voss defeating Norm Duke by the score of 265 to 222. Norm lost 10 pins with the towel throw. Voss flirted with perfection to defeat his buddy, setting up a great championship match. Joe? Well, we described this earlier as a generational gap showdown here, and here it is, the next generation, the living legend. Brian, let me start with you. That was so emotional against your best friend on tour. It took so much focus and energy. How do you reset your mindset now for this title match? Well, really, after uh, the eighth strike, uh, I knew the match was over, and I just wanted to settle down and try and shoot 300. Uh, maybe it's a good thing I didn't, because I'd, I'd still be going crazy <laughs> right now. So I, I'm ready. I, I kind of lost the right lane a little bit in practice. I, I'm still kind of fishing, and I'm going to have to finish on that lane. So uh, I got my work cut out for me. Good luck, Brian. Thank you. 
Tommy, when you go up against a guy like this, a Hall of Famer, do you carry a nothing-to-lose attitude? Yeah, Brian Voss is a great bowler. Uh, I grew up watching him bowl on TV, and I've learned a lot from him. So today we're going to see how much I've learned from him. We will see. <laughs> Randy, what are we in store for in this matchup? Well, we're in store for some fireworks, but let me show you the keys to victory today. Tommy Jones has to keep his hands up. That means don't overhit it, over rev it. It'll blow right through the spot down the lane and obviously stay on an even keel. Brian Voss has to hit his slide, meaning he has to stay posted and then have that hook game ready if need be. And joining us in the booth, my good friend, and a guy who is very crafty, as you just saw in the last match, with a towel. Norm Duke, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. First question I have to ask you, buddy, what happened in that match against Brian? Well, I lost three frames in a row right after the turkey. And, uh, you know, and Brian lost a couple, too. But uh, he, he was fortunate to, to get the carry that he needed to uh, sustain the string. And once you're on strikes, Randy, you know every, every shot you throw, you get a 10-pin bigger advantage. And then uh, before, before it was too long, it was all over. Well, not much changes for Brian Voss, guys. Opens with a strike. See, Jones had seven himself in his semifinal. Not happening here. Well, we saw Tommy Jones in his first match play the deep inside line. He was at 26. Now he's at 28, and that ball doesn't hold pocket. So he's either going to have to move in deeper and start lofting it, or he's going to have to move right where Brian Boss is. The Baby Ruth real deal matchup between Jones and Voss. Six pins a game, higher average. Obviously, advantage Voss. The big thing, though, that you have to watch for is who's going to have the better ball reaction. This is Brian looking at the right lane. Remember, he told Joe that he wasn't real sure about his reaction on the right lane. But Tommy Jones, Norm Duke, is some 15 to 20 boards left of Brian Voss, and now it changed balls. And the question I have to ask you is, is it advantage Tommy Jones or advantage Brian Voss based on the way the two are playing the lanes? Well, I fully intended to go out and play the same line as Tommy Jones, and it was squirrely in there. And I, I elected to go right between them. I think that Brian has the advantage now based on what I saw inside that fourth arrow. 2-5 spare for Jones. It is Mark. Norm, in my opinion, this shot right now on this right lane is going to basically tell the entire story of this match. He will. I think so. And, and I think he has moved his feet uh, considerably left. He's going to go a little more direct than he was uh, in the first match. And let's see if it works for him. And he didn't. He stayed right where he was. Randy just took his hand out of the out of the, the, the ball and just let it square up to the pins, and it did not hit. That's it, trouble. It almost looked like he moved further right and just and and then just kind of took all the hit out of it, and that ball was flat as a pancake. So he was perfect through eight in his semifinal. Here, the spare in the second frame. ESPN's coverage of PBA bowling rolls on next Sunday. Tour makes a stop in Medford, Oregon for the Earl Anthony Medford Classic PBA Bowling ESPN Sunday at 1 Eastern. And Norm, you know, it's it's always a, uh, a great uh, a great thing for us going back to Medford because we get to see our old friend Marshall Holman. Well, you know, he was an idol of all of ours, Randy. He still is, and he's going to be playing with us next week. Maybe he is the one that's going to take Brian Boss down. Brian Voss and Marshall Holman actually tied with 22 career wins apiece. Marshall Holman getting a commissioner's exemption. So not only will we see him physically, but we'll see him in action. And always great to go back to Medford and Lava Lanes. Spare ball to take out the nine for Brian Voss. The 46-year-old Hall of Famer against the 26-year-old up-and-comer. There he is, Tommy Jones, former high school baseball player, a self-taught bowler. 
Came back from three games down to one in the round of 16, and now here in the title. Norm Duke, less aggressive bowling ball, same line. That shot looked pretty good. Listen to how softly he puts it down. Did you even hear it hit the lane? You know, that's the remarkable thing about Tommy is he has so much power, but also he has the finesse, like you mentioned before, uh, the, the soft hand. Making sure that he's got a nice, nice grip there, adding a piece of tape. You know, the thing I asked Tommy last night was that, you know, how do you create all that hit? He says, I don't know, because I don't feel anything on the end of my fingers. It's worked out well this season. You see his finishes. Won the Japan Cup. Says, I just need to think positive and positive vibes. Oh. Looking for that late help on the seven. In Norm, when watching Tommy Jones, I kind of it, it kind of reminds me of watching Rick Steele Smith when he first came out on tour, where you were almost afraid to bowl against him. And my old roommate and, and your friend, you remember Tom Kreitz, my doubles partner on tour for many years, six-time champion. We were watching Tommy Jones on Friday, and Tommy said to me, "It's amazing that Tommy Jones doesn't win three tournaments a year out here." He might from now on. And make it 63 of 65 on his single pin conversions this week in Denver. Lawson Jones, more to come. PBA Denver Open alongside Randy Peterson and Norm Duke. I'm Joe Tessitore. Time for our Uniroyal Tire Rock and Roll, Randy. And normally I do the Uniroyal Rock and Roll, but I think it's only fitting, Norm, you take this one. Well, you know, this is just to show how a pendulum swing can be so effective, and I use it as a teaching aid. Now, at this point, I use it to suck $10 bills out of Brian Voss's pocket. <laughs> nice. Of course, Brian Voss, I think, will gladly pay you the $10 if he sinks his teeth into the 40000 that comes along with winning this Denver Open. You saw the strike percentages there moments ago. Voss heading in the right direction. Jones a little bit behind his typical number. Voss by one pin right now. Four seven nine. Brian Excuse Voss. me. Four six seven. Brian Voss confused on that right lane, Norm. Uh, he just didn't make a good pass at that. You know, I know he's going straight, and, and that was very straight, but he lost it off his hand, missed left, and he did not want it. He wanted that one back off his hand. You know, the thing that's always been uh, trouble for me is when you're trying to go that straight, and you know you can't leak at a board to the right, you tend to grab it and miss left. No question. That's the hardest thing about going to red. Of course, the opposite is true when you're hooking the ball. And the chameleon pattern is blown apart. It's looking real ugly right now. Well, you know, he just moved his feet into where I was playing him, and uh, there was already a track there, Brian. So what does he do now, Norm? Well, he's going to have to stay right of that area or move left of it for the fourth, uh, Tommy Jones. Converts to nine. Makes his mark. Good look at George Heaty there, the general manager of Brunswick Zone Lakewood. It's been an outstanding week here for the PBA. And what a great crowd here in Denver. It's been over a decade since the PBA has been here in the Mile High City. They're happy to have it back. South Carolina's Tommy Jones. Looks like a pretty good adjustment, Norm. Yeah, that's the, that's the third perfect pitch in a row for Tommy Jones, and I know he's comfortable. You know, he got that bad break not catching that seven pin in, in between those strikes. But this is pure off his hand. 27, 27 forward going out to about 10. late help no sir that look from there norm brian threw a couple of those at you the last game yeah brian, brian had some family strikes in there yeah <laughs> but the good news though no split he remains clean however he doesn't take advantage of the strike in the fifth frame so his lead with a spare here will still be 13. brian Voss still in it he's got to figure out where to go norm 
if there's anybody on this planet that can make an adjustment on two lanes and get two strikes in a row, it's Brian Voss. I think that uh, we're going to see some, some metal now. Norm Duke, I, I sensed at the end of the semifinal against Brian Voss that Brian was actually very emotional. Do you think that affected him heading into this title match? Did he drain a lot of that no, in that I, semifinal? No, I don't think so. I think he's at his best when he's emotional. I just think there's a lot of changes out there in the lanes, and these guys are trying to stay on top of it. That's see how he deals with the changes here. Very well, thank you. Much better pitch. You can see it immediately out of his hand, Norm. You can see that that shot was pretty clean out of his hand. It holds line and has that little bit of back and reaction. And you know the Voss family. I know all of them, and they're such great people. See, Diane. I would have felt terrible if I'd have won in front of all of us. Diane, his mom. Mike and Mark, Brian's brothers. Dina, his sister, all here in Lakewood, Colorado. So the split right through the nose, leaving the 410. And you look how different he's playing these two lanes now, Norm Duke. It looked like a pretty good shot, just soft. He's got to get the ball over to this side of the four pin and throw it over into the 10. Randy rating on this shot is about... Never for me. An 8.0. Looks good. Oh. oh, so an open frame. You know, we used to have visits from Andy Verapapa back in Schenectady in the day. Could have used him here in Denver there. Joe, your grandfather owned a bowling center in Schenectady. VV Lanes. Did, did anybody ever throw a bowling ball out of a towel for <laughs> yeah, a strike? No. no, I think they would have enjoyed seeing that. Okay. Norm Duke, highlight of the day. Opportunity for Tommy Jones now. And well, makes the most of it, guys. Just like Hall of Fame bowlers, when somebody opens up in front of you, you have to take advantage of it. Tommy Jones doing exactly what Brian Voss taught him to do when he used to watch the television show. Kind of reminds me of Star Wars and, uh, you know, in uh, Luke Skywalker and uh, and Darth Vader, or you know, be before you left, I was but the ma I'm the master now. I'm the learner, the master. Well, Brian Voss was the master. Tommy Jones was the learner. Looks like Tommy Jones was a good study. The 26-year-old. Looking for his second title of the year. Bingo. That's going to help. Bingo. Best Brian Voss can shoot, Norm Duke, is 201. Tommy Jones going at a 208 pace. The only chance Brian Voss will have is if Tommy Jones lets him in. Take a look at this, Norm. I tell you, that is the shot that wins you titles, too. When you can go up by 30 this late in the game and you can make a shot like that on a difficult condition. Trailing by 37 pins, he needs it. Wow. That was a pretty good pitch by Brian, too, and, and it looks to be over for him unless he gets a whole lot of help right now. We talked about the fact that Tommy Jones has been blowing out opponents when he was one in his 16 wins he had this week. Of the seven. Semi-final number one, he was red hot. He was perfect through eight. 10 of 12 strikes. You see the difference here, and you guys have touched on it, the lane conditions as the day has moved onward. And you could see that it was going to be advantage Tommy Jones. He stayed in the same zone and just went to a less aggressive bowling ball. Brian Voss is playing one lane up five. He's playing another lane like in between second and, second and third arrow. Four. And you see that chameleon pattern, Randy. Tommy Jones started in here, and when the lanes dried up, he just went to a less aggressive bowling ball. Okay, let's try that again. Tommy Jones started in here, and when it dried up, he just went to a less aggressive bowling ball. Brian Voss started here. Then on the right lane, he tried to go this way. On the left lane, he's kind of been here. Brian Voss is all over the place. Tough to win that way, Norm. Strike to win here for Tommy Jones. Got it. Tommy Jones, the first bowler this season to win multiple titles, his second. And a look of relief for the 26-year-old. 
Y'all talked about three titles in a year. I think that, uh, you know, that's a true statement. He is as good as they get right now. And just a young guy, got a lot of years ahead of him on the PBA Tour, Norm, as long as he stays healthy. And it is Tommy Jones's day today. Wade Holt. And Tommy Jones is your PBA Denver Open champion. The generation gap. Jones versus Voss. A good look at the future of the PBA Tour from this very exciting player. Fast track to finish up here. His wife, Kristen, back home. I'm sure thrilled right now. Friends, James and Andrea, watching alongside. He wanted to make sure we mentioned them. He was thinking about them all week long. Tommy Jones on his home turf, American soil, he can celebrate with the PBA fans. And a nice way to finish his first championship stateside, 24810 conversion. So Tommy Jones defeats Brian Boss 224 to 179, his second title this year. Colorado and the PBA Tour, a good mix and a great day of bowling. The fans here enjoyed themselves. They saw Tommy Jones win the PBA Denver Open over Brian Voss. Randy Peterson is standing by with him. Randy? Tommy Jones got his first PBA title in Japan in September. Tommy, first of all, congratulations. How does it feel to get your first title stateside? Thanks, Randy. It feels great. The, the people here at Brunswick Zone this week in Denver were unbelievable. The staff and everybody treated us great. We, the, the, you know, I mean, we haven't had a crowd like this this year. These fans are awesome. You guys did a great job. You should applaud yourself. Looking forward to coming back to Denver next year? I'll be back no matter what. Tommy, next question I have to ask you is, that, at what point during the last match did you feel inside that this tournament was yours? Well, in bowling, strange things can happen, and Brian Voss is one of the greatest bowlers of all time. So until he's out of wood, you always got to think that he can come back. But, you know, when I got up and, and made a good shot on the right lane in the ninth frame, I knew it was mine, and I could celebrate a little bit. Tommy, congratulations. Thanks very much. Back to you, Joe. Thanks, Randy. He says he'll be back. He'll be back many times in many spots on this tour, only 26 years old. You see the march to the PBA World Championship, and Voss and Jones now second and fourth. see Tommy Jones collecting the hardware here. The big win over Brian Voss. The fans well appreciative. Congratulations to Tommy Jones with Randy Peterson and our entire ESPN team. I'm Joe Tessitore. Be sure to join us again next Sunday at 1 Eastern here on ESPN for the PBA Earl Anthony Medford Classic from Lava Lanes in Medford, Oregon. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming up next, Power Golf, the 2004 Pinnacle LDA Tour from Williamsburg, Virginia. So long from Lakewood, Colorado.